Thank you. Can I show me this first slide, please? Yes. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you very much. Okay. So as you can see, I'll be talking about drug discovery. And it will be antimicrobial constituents from medicinal plants, microbes, and marine sources. Antimicrobial compounds can be obtained from different natural sources, especially microorganisms. However, there are compounds that can be obtained from medicinal plants and many organisms, which can also treat a variety of microbial infections. Next one, please. Before we go into details of the drug discovery, we need to learn something about, or need to know something about antimicrobial resistance. In fact, antimicrobial resistance has become a serious global public health concern because we can frequently hear that drugs that do not work against microorganisms. Many drugs do not work. The microorganisms are changing over time. There are varieties of reasons for that. And in fact, for those reasons, the organisms has, have become resistant towards the commonly available microbial is, antimicrobial agents. As a result, infection have been difficult to control, which increase the risk of spread of disease severe illness and death. And if you look at the prognosis in, two, in 2050, there will be 10 million deaths from antimicrobial resistance problem. So definitely we need to do something about this. And that is why we're here today. Next one, please. Uh, actually, antimicrobial resistance has been a challenge and antimicrobial, antimicrobial natural product discovery is also a difficult task. Why is the challenge? There are limited funding for antibiotic research in the pharma sector. Only 5% of the total investment of pharma is in this section. Inadequate effort on antibiotic development. Not enough. Incomplete antibiotic stewardship guidance. Antibiotic use in agriculture and food and animals. Currently, Antimicrobial products of natural origin have become it has, it has become an important tight topic of scientific interest because their chemical diversity and intrinsic properties they can be useful in treating a varieties of microorganisms which have become resistant towards the commonly available antibiotics. Next one, please. Is it possible to remove this ribbon? There's a ribbon on top of the, okay, thank you. And if you look at the contribution of plant constituents in drug discovery, then you can find that as per the WHO, World Health Organization, 80% of the world population still relies on traditional medicine for their primary health care. If we look at the details in depth study carried out in the United States, which says that out of the 1881 new compounds, new drugs approved between 1981 to 2019, 71 were unaltered natural products. 14 were botanical drugs, which included definite mixers. 356 were natural products derivatives. 65, 65 were natural products pharmacophore-based synthetic drugs, and 424 were mimic of natural products. So if we look at this figure, and if you look at this diagram, then it is evident that drugs obtained from plant or plant-derived substances are making significant contribution to the new drug discovery program of the world. Next one, please. Now, if we look at some of the examples of drugs that has been obtained, that have been obtained from plants, then Catharanthus roseus, very common plant, Catharanthus is known is in Bangladesh. Then vincristine and vinblastine, two unique compounds, structurally unique compounds were obtained, and both of them showed potent anti-cancer activity. And we can find anti-cancer drug in the market containing this vincristine and vinblastine isolated from Catharanthus roseus. If you look at Digitalis lanata, another plant which contains varieties of glycosides, cardiac glycosides, out of which digoxin is a unique molecule. This increases the contractility of the heart. 
and this is used as an antiarrhythmic drug. Next one, please. If you look at Raul Fier Serpentina, another plant, the root of this plant contains an alkaloid risarpine. And the risarpine was the first drug that was used to be used for the treatment of hypertension. Recently, there are many other drugs. That is why risarpine is not used as antihypertensive, but it has again antipsychotic utilizations. If we look at very common aloe vera, we all know aloe vera. It has aloin or barbaloin type glycosides. And this plant is used for the treatment of constipation, burn, and skin problem. Ginseng is all known to us. It contains some unique, again, structurally unique uh, steroidal molecule, which strengthen the immune system and help fight of stress and disease. So these are some examples of plants that can be used as medicines and it is available in the market. These are available in the market as drugs. Next one, please. Now, how about the Bangladesh? If we look at Bangladesh, the Bangladesh is a subtropical country and it is a very good repository of medicinal plants. There are around 5,000 NGO plants distributed among 200 families. And approximately 600 of these plants are being used in traditional medicines for the treatment of different types of disease. This indicates that Bangladesh has a lot of plants which are used in traditional medicines. And if we work with this plant, then we can get some new molecule that can be used for the treating and different diseases, including antibacterials uh, agent. Next one, please. Now, why we are working on this whole product in Bangladesh? If you look at the survey data, so far 119 drugs from 90 medicinal plants are available in the world market for the treatment of various diseases directly from plant. These are not modified plant products. A US based survey in 1993 indicated that over 50% of the most prescribed drugs in the US had a natural product either as a drug or as a forebear in the synthesis or design of drug. That means in, 19, in survey conducted in 1993 indicated that 50% of the prescription contains medicines that are either directly from plant or natural product or they were derived from natural product. As I said earlier, Bangladesh is a subtropical country and has so many plant resources. Based on these enormous resources, we have 266 immunani. There are, we have 216 Ayurvedic and 32 herbal products manufacturing industries. These traditional medicines and SaaS knowledge can be valuable starting point to conduct scientific studies for discovery of new drugs for treating varieties of disease conditions. Next one, please. Now, when we collect a plant or microbes, our marine samples, how do we proceed? So we are not going to, I'm not going to the details of this, but we am, there is a schematic diagram. The sample is collected, it is extracted with appropriate solvent, and then it is subjected to various chromatographic separation and purification processes. And repeated chromatographic separation and purification processes followed by biassay of each of the fractions, crude extract and fractions, and very molecules, gives us pure compounds whose structure is determined by extensive studies of UV visible, infrared, nuclear magnetic resonance, and mass spectrometric techniques. Thank you. Next one, please. So I'm not showing an examples of drug that is known as Nigel and Sativa. This is very common. It is also commonly known as black cumin or black seed. It is used as condiment. It has antihypertensive activity, it has antiviral properties, and many other health benefits. And this one, we got the volatile oil of this plant, of the seed of Nigella sativa, and tested on Shigella flexionary strains, which are resistant to ampicillin. Chloramphenicol, tetracycline, cotrimoxazole, and nalidixid acid. That means the 
organisms or the strains of shigella flexneri or are resistant to most of the commonly anti diarrheal anti dysentery agent however when you tested the volatile oil against the resistant strains we found that at 10 microliter per disc or n 20 microliter per disc these or work very nicely we so you can see that shigella s is 4 the the diameter of zone of inhibition was 44 mm if you look at the other one next one 8125 then it, the zone of inhibition was 38 mm that means all the strains were active or sensitive to the volatile oil obtained from rice oil satayva so we proceed further next one please then what we did we feed the oil to the monkey to the monkey and then we collected the serum of the monkey and the serum was diluted appropriately and then tested for growth of inhibition and it was found that maximum dilution of serum showing anti shigel activity was on one stage in case of vehicle no inhibition in case of our drug in monkey 1 and monkey 2 eight fold dilution showed antimicrobial activity so the animal was treated with volatile oil the blood sample was collected the serum was separated and the serum was then tested for antimicrobial activity we also fed the monkey with the volatile oil and then the rectal swab was collected and we tested the rectal swab for growth of the microorganisms and it was found that on the second day of treatment there was growth of the microorganisms but third fourth fifth and sixth day there was no growth that means nigella setai has significant anti shigel activity even those shigella strains were resistant to the commonly used antibiotics so it has a serious promise that we can understand now next one please garuga pinata is another plant which is known in english as garuga it is commonly it has traditionally used as antimicrobial agents it has also anti diabetic properties and many other properties when we work with this plant we found several compounds we found six compounds the structures of which are have been shown here when we tested the purified compounds against the microbial strain we found remarkable activity in the next slide please this slide shows the antimicrobial activity of the most active compound garogonin 5 this when we tested against different strains bacillus Staphylococcus, E. coli, Vibrio mimicus, Aspergillus, and Candida, both fungus and bacteria. Then Garogonin 5 showed potent, more potent activity than Canamycin, when used as a standard in case of antimicrobial assay, and Nystatin used in case of antifungal study. If we look at example one, Bacillus cereus, the Garogonin 5 zone of inhibition was 40 millimeter. In contrast, Canamycin showed only 21 nanom millimeter. If we look at Candida albicans as fungus, then the zone of inhibition was 35 millimeter. In contrast, Nystatin produced only 20 millimeter. That means this garogonin can be proceed further to see whether it can be used as a therapeutic agent because this is the initial study. We need to go further. Next one, please. Parmelia camsandalis is a lichen that is available in Bangladesh. We isolated several compounds from this lichen, and we are showing the structure of one of the unique compound, usnic acid. This usnic acid was tested against microorganisms, and we are showing the data of only against four: Bacillus subtilis, E. coli, Staph aureus, and Staph epidermidis, and Ustic acid was the activity of ustic acid was compared with the commonly used amoxicillin, streptomycin, and tetracycline. We can see that Staphylococcus aureus was only sensitive to ustic acid, while it was resistant to amoxicillin and streptomycin. In addition, Bacillus subtilis showed. Zone of inhibition 23 millimeter, E. coli 25 millimeter, Staphylococcus epidermis 23 millimeter. That means, again, this is this has a lot of promise as 
drug candidates. Next one, please. Erythra Fusca is another plan that contains several <coughs> sterocanfin derivatives and steroid. And this is commonly known as a coral tree. And it has nice purple color coral because you can see the flower, nice purple flower. So this is purple coral tree is also called. We tested the pure compound uh, against several microorganisms. The data is shown in the next slide. Uh, if you look at this drug, uh, this the pure compound, xenoterocarpine, lupifolin, eriopoisin A was tested, and the standard was scanamycin versus nistatin for antimicrobial and antifungal assay. The, all the compound showed potential activity against all the tested organisms. That means none of the organisms was resistant to the, com, com, the compound tested. This proves that this compound also have a potential uh, as promise to be considered for drug development in future. Next one, please. Uh, this is another plant, Kananga odota. The this is known as Kananga tree. And when we work with this plant, we found three compounds here: three for dimethoxybenzoic acid, liluranin, or methyl muscatolin. And we tested the pure compound against several microbial stains. The data is shown in the next slide. Again, the, there are several organisms tested, and the cannabis, cannabis, these are all bacteria. So we use cannabis, in, and we can see that the compound tested, the pure compound tested showed reasonably bi biological activity, antimicrobial activity against most of the organisms. So we can conclude that, again, some of these compounds can be tested further or this can be chemically modified to give more potent compound with better biological activity. Next one, please. Loranthus globulus is another plant belonging to the family Loranthesi. It is commonly known as Mistolotto, and it was it is used traditionally for irregular menstruation, astringent, and diuretic. Then we when we work with this plant, we found three simple compounds, catechin, 3,4-dimethoxy-cinamoyl alcohol, and 3,4,5-trimethoxy-cinamoyl alcohol. And we tested this compound against several microbial strains. And again, we got good data. If you look at the next slide, the data can be seen. Antimicrobial activities, the next, next one, please. Antimicrobial activities of compound isolated from Noranthus globulus. We can see that we use Bacillus subtilis, Sarcina lutea, Shigella dysentery, Shigella shiga, Shigella bodai, Shigella swani, Shigella flexmari, E. coli, and Salmonella typhi. And again, the cannabis was used as a standard. It, those, those were 30 microgram per disc. And we tested the compound at 150 microgram per disc and 300 microgram per disc. Fortunately, all the compounds showed activity against all of the tested organisms. The next slide shows HIV inhibitor activity of Anisomelis indica, which is known as cat mint traditionally. And it has antidiarrheal, antibacterial, and antiviral activity. And this traditional use was confirmed when this compound, when this dicarpine was tested against HIV, infect, HIV infection, it was found to give better activity with effective concentration 50% at 10, 10 or on 0.10 microgram per milliliter. And the inhibitory concentration was 1.20 microgram per milliliter with maximum cellular protection of 80 to 90%. That means the traditional antiviral activity was confirmed by biological assay. We, I worked with uh, a medical response, Sidonov microspinosa collected from Indonesia. Additionally, uh, this one uh, was tested 
against my HIV infection, and this peptide showed better activity against the CMS SS target cell with EC50 of 0.2 microgram per milliliter. This test was conducted in the US National Cancer Institute because I had the opportunity to work there as a scientist for four years. And next one, please. Lobophytum is another uh, soft coral collected from Philippines. This yielded three sesquitiapins. And all these shame brain derivatives showed significant anti-HIV activity with EC50 and IC50 shown in the table. If we look at all these compounds, they are all active uh, against the HIV infection. Next one, please. This is another uh, spawns, any marine spawns known as stellate species. It was collected from northwestern Australia. Extensive ke chemical investigation led to us with the isolation and characterization of two peptides known as stellate peptin A and stellate peptin B, both new molecules, novel molecules. The data was published in tetrahedral liters in 19, uh, 215. These two peptides had unique amino acids compositions and it showed again a remarkable HIV inhibitory activity. In the, that data is shown in the next slide. This slide shows that stellate peptin A and B Potent inhibit infection of human T lymphoblastoid cells by HIV reverse transcriptase with EC50 values of 23 and 27 nanomolar, respectively. Next one. I worked with another microbial species collected from soil samples in Bangladesh, and we obtained several compounds. We are showing one of the compounds identified as dehydroaltonicin. This dehydroaltonucin showed again nice and anti HIV activity against the HIV inhibitory HIV infection tested in the US National Cancer Institute. Next. So we can see that we have the promise to get so many compounds from medicinal plants, microbes, and marine organisms, and many of them have shown potential biological activities, especially here, antimicrobial, antifungal activities, but there are other compounds can be obtained, which would show better activities on other systems. However, this research work with phytochemical constituent from plants, microbes, and marine animals. There are a lot of problems. It is not easy task. It is a laborious job, a tedious job, time-consuming job, and very difficult to get the pure compound in significant amount. And when the pure compound is obtained, the activity could have been mean, diminished as well. So what we see, we identified that lack of coordination and monitoring. Projects should be well managed and monitored. Better and stronger cooperation among researchers and institutions needed. The institution, the, many of the institutions in Bangladesh have been working. We need to establish cooperation and collaboration among the institutions so that we can commonly we can do something much better than what we are doing now as individual. Proper documentation is a must. Maybe I am working on one plan and another person may be also working on the same plan. If we have proper documentation, this can have been avoided. Linkage with universities and industry should be established. I have shown that many of the components showed potential activity. But what next? We have to take this forward by doing more research, because some of the compounds could have been real drug, if not the drug candidates. So we need to work more, and that for that one, we need funding, and for that, we also need collaboration between universities and industries. Lack of funding is another problem. Human resource development and training is essential. Equipment services must be provided and available. And this, to do this, we need lack of, we need funding, and we see inadequate. Lack of focus. Sometimes the researchers have too many responsibilities. The, as a result, we cannot focus on the research only, rather than we have to do teaching and other administrative jobs. Training for staff and students are required so that we can have more focused research in future to give better yield in terms of 
biologically active compound, not compound, biologically active drug in the market. Next one, please. If we conclude what we can, what we have found so far, many structurally unique and biologically active compounds have been isolated and characterized. Some of the isolated compounds exhibited potent antibacterial, antifungal, and HIV inhibitory activities. Chemical modification of some of the selected molecules may provide lead compounds for drug discovery. And that's all for today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, Antimicrobial assay is always an interesting topic for the research. And then uh, before I pass the question to an audience, I just would like to, uh, my personal in, uh, curiosity, that uh, what will be like uh, your further step or further uh, experiment? Do you have any plan to do it with an animal models or even um, to the uh, clinical research in the future? Actually, you know, when I showed the slide on Nigella sativa, it was on uh, animal model. We oh. use monkey to test the compound. Oh. And sometimes we test on um, uh, drug on a rat model. Mm. But we need to take it further, definitely. Because if we mean to develop drug, we have to go to the clinical trials. But unfortunately, there is lack of funding to proceed further. And if we can uh, get adequate funding, we can uh, arrange adequate funding from appropriate sources. Maybe we can we can work more and discover something for 